I'm meteorologist Gary Lezak with Weather 2020. A fascinating weather pattern is evolving above us in the river of air that is cycling regularly. I've seen a lot of knee-jerk reactions to polar vortex this, the cold outbreak that, and what it means for the winter, El Nino, La Nina, AO, NAO, other oscillations. The biggest piece of the atmospheric jigsaw is the LRC. Let me take you through this in this special report. Our Weather 2020 Intelligence Report on this Veterans Day. Hello to all the veterans out there and uh, happy Veterans Day. Let's take a look at this uh, weather update today. Very fascinating for sure. All right, so we can see we're calling it the cold outbreak will return. It's part of the new LRC. The cold outbreak will return. The storm coming into the western United States, that part of the pattern is going to return. What do I mean will return? The pattern is cycling regularly. It's a major discovery in meteorology, and I've been working on it for 40 years of my career, and it traces all the way back to Jerome de Mayas back in the 1940s and 50s. He was the head of the Long Range Forecasting Division of the Weather Bureau back then. So very interesting. All right, so let's take a look. The roulette wheel is spinning. The weather roulette wheel is spinning, and the ball is now beginning to slow down, and it will drop into one of these categories. Will it drop into snow and Snow and cold, cold and snowy. Will it fall in the cold and dry slot, the warm and dry slot, the rainy and cool slot? Where is this weather ball going to drop for your location? We will know a lot more. We are all experiencing the first cycle of this year's LRC, and the ball will drop into one of the slots in the next three weeks. All right, everyone, look at this. This is what has been going on since the weather pattern began. We identify a day one of this year's pattern around October 5th or 6th. We'll call it October 5th. So here's the rainfall pattern from October 5th to November 10th. As of a couple of days ago, you can see dry across much of the Corn Belt. And even though we have the lake effect snow, it might add to some of this, but, but pretty much a drying trend. Look at this in the west coast california to the pacific northwest all a little bit above average far southern california a little bit below average at, so far now watch this i'm going to compare it to a year ago see that so there is last year in the same 35 36 day stretch this year last year look at that this is all posted in the Weather 2020 Intelligence Report, if you have that. Above average temperatures so far this year. Last year, same thing. It was much above average also across much of the middle part of the country. So this year, cooler in the Pacific Northwest and the Southeast. Last year, just to show you the differences. A completely different weather pattern is evolving. The LRC is the centerpiece of the big atmospheric jigsaw. There's a river of air that is cycling across the northern hemisphere and also in the southern hemisphere. All right. The, there are other influences, the PNA, the Arctic Oscillation, the North Atlantic Oscillation, the MJO, ENZO, La Nina, a week La Nina is developing. These are influences on something much bigger. The LRC is by far the biggest piece of the puzzle. The other pieces, though, are interesting. As you may have heard, there's been a weak La Nina developing. The temperatures have been cooling. See this one dotted line right in here, this minus 0.5 line? If we have five three-month averages below minus 0.5 or lower, then we will end up with a La Nina year. So it's dropping here in October and November. There's going to be one, two, but look what happens by December, January, and February, and by January, February, and March. It's forecast to go back towards neutral. So like last year, we likely won't have a La Nina winter. It will be a neutral season ahead. All right, so something to look at, and here's the data. You can look at our, our weather report, but you can see there it is. It's minus 0.5. So August, September, October, 
That'll be two three-month averages, three three-month averages, November, December, January. Will it be five in a row in a week La Nina? Possibly. But uh, right now, I'm saying it's unlikely because by January, February, March, it's forecasted to be above that threshold. And so the month earlier than that, too. The Arctic Oscillation and the North Atlantic Oscillation. Notice how right now it's forecast to dip right now in the next few days and dip to minus two or three. The NAO, same thing. When the Arctic Oscillation dips deep negative, Arctic air blasts south and storms get energized. All right, when it's high positive, Arctic air is held up north and storm systems are usually a little bit weaker. But notice how this season we've been hovering near neutral, right? This is our first big dip down to below to minus two on the NAO to minus three on the AO. So we'll watch this closely. So there's an influence. There's a block forming with this negative dip. Remember, this is dipping negative right now, right? So we'll look at that in a second. Snowfall. This is snow cover as of a week ago and compare it to now. So again, a week ago and the latest. You can see the lake effect snow that predominantly has produced a little bit of a snowpack. Watch the Arctic ice, the sea ice. This is a week ago. Now, notice how the Arctic ice in yellow is growing. So as it gets colder up there in the North Pole, it's now freezing over and it will continue to expand, as you can see there. Very interesting, with some snow cover increasing. All right, what just caused this cold outbreak? Well, we have a little bit of a block with that negative AO forming, perhaps an influence here. An upper high over southern Greenland. This was as of Monday morning. And directly underneath that is this deep upper level low that formed over Indiana and Illinois. This caused the colder air to come down and wrap around the system. This is a pretty big trough. Remember this pattern because I am going to show you in the next few months how many times this part of the pattern will return. We will see a pattern similar to this. It will return. Look how it was, a big upper high. It looks like a blocking upper high over Southern California, blocking storms, but not really, because look what happens just a few days later. Watch closely. Now here is by Friday night. This upper level low forms near the California coast, and it's strong enough to bring some heavy rain. Since it's drifting offshore, it's going to likely bring some heavy rain into Southern California. And then there's another kicking storm that's going to kick that out. In fact, I'll show that to you in a second. Still, the blocking high is up here. Very interesting weather pattern. I know this is very complex. We're looking at 18,000 feet up, the 500 millibar level. The winds blow parallel to this, these lines up at this level, 18,000 feet above us. And we can see the LRC fairly well. The pattern is still evolving, but these features are going to return during the winter and spring and even next summer, the year ahead. Here's California. Look at the heavy rain on the latest data forecast for Southern California. Sunspots get two, three, four inches of rain from this wet system. As this system tracks off to the Northeast, remember Colorado has had almost no snow this season so far. And you can see that system weakens, goes up to the north. A little bit of snow in the ski areas. So there could be four, six, eight inches of snow up here, and then some rain at lower elevations, and then that stronger storm could come in. And that one looks like a wetter storm for Colorado, but I'll reserve to my judgment on that one for another few days. But anyway, this is the surface pattern. Interesting for Kansas City, dry for a little while. How much rain? Look at Southern California. That is this pink to purple or about two to three to four inches of rain around Los Angeles and Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, back into San Diego even, one, two inches of rain. And as that system moves east, it, it dries out as it goes over the mountains with some heavy snow in the mountains, up to two feet or so possible. That level of snow elevations would be pretty high. Could be three feet up there in some spots. Colorado just started to get some snow by Saturday. And then this is the snow forecast by Saturday morning for the east, still more lake effect snow coming in in these little bands of lake effect snow, as you can see here, 
but dry over the plains. Speaking of dry, this is the LRC model. We have a patent pending model that forecasts up to a year ahead using the weather patterns that cycle. All right, so uh, this is the outlook from now through April 30th, from December 1st to April 30th. For the, so for the next six months ahead, you can see we have drought concerns in these brown areas where it's been dry. But remember, the model is pulling from last year's pattern and half of this year's pattern so far. In about two or three weeks, that will no longer be the case. We'll see how this evolves and changes. But it's starting out a little wetter down here. Our model's predicting that, but that might be pulling from last year's pattern. But that's interesting. Another feature we have, and this is on our Weather 2020 site, and you can purchase this. More than that in a second. But these are called Growing Degree Days, GDDs. And this is the outlook through April 30th. And notice how as the warm season begins down south, the growing degree days start increasing. Down in this color, that'd be, you know, over 1,000 to 1,500 growing degree days already by the end of April down here across Oklahoma and Arkansas. And you can see a day-by-day -day forecast for high temperatures, low temperatures, growing degree days, heating degree days. If you're an energy trader, you can see the forecast is for the growing degree days to expand as we go into the warm season next year. And this, can, this is for the entire region. We can go down to your farm, to your county. So let us know if you're interested in getting that. Just contact Bryce at weather2020.com. Bryce Palmer. Bryce, B-R-Y-C-E at weather2020.com. Or go to weather2020.com. You can purchase it right there. So there you go. There is the uh, forecast, the outlook, a description of the LRC. The weather pattern is cycling and regularly. And let me know if you have any questions at all. If you're not a premium member yet, you can join. You can join by going to weather2020.substack.com. Uh, I'm meteorologist Gary Lezak. Have a great day. This is Jeff Penner.